Amen. We are going we are going to start a new strongman tonight and it's going to be the spirit of whoredoms spirit of whoredoms and um, if you don't study some of these spirits or some of the definition of these words then you'll think the spirit of whoredom is just stuck with just one particular you know one particular thing but as I begin to um, dig into it and get a definition of it and an understanding of what it really was um, it opened up a whole lot of other things that we, we, that we might not realize that's tied to it and so the spirit of whoredom um, it's coming out of the book of Hosea chapter 5 and 4 and it's basically talking about how the people of God um, had really deserted had really deserted God Amen. and started following other gods what? Has, had started following after other gods and if we're not careful, amen, we could be uh, allowing the spirit of or the, or, the, or, the, or the strong man of boredom to invade our life and we don't even realize it amen. by some of the things that we allow to come before God. Amen. Okay? And so that's what we're going to talk about in this spirit. Um, and and, and I, want it, I, want it, I want it to be understood that we can make Anything out of a God. Amen. Anything can be a God. Anything. Okay? Um, I'm told over in the Middle East, the Middle Eastern countries, is that one of the reasons why God said in Exodus chapter 20 um, about, you know, worship no other God or have no other gods before me is because those people would worship anything. Yeah, they'll worship a tree. I mean, we laughing, but there's a lot of things that, that we find ourselves. We can worship children, not even realizing. Worship man. Yeah, we can worship jobs. We can worship those types of things, not even realizing. So the spirit of whoredoms, um, there's a lot of things attached to it. I think we're going to try to touch on some of them. We won't, we won't exhaust it. In other words, you won't, we won't get all of the things that's connected to it, but we'll get a basic understanding of what it's um, really telling us. So uh, the spirit of whoredoms is coming out of the book of Hosea. Chapter five and four. That's the scripture that um, that um, you know details this spirit. And some of the fruit on the tree is. This is just a few a few of the fruit that's in this book. Okay, and this one that I know should be on here that's not, and we're gonna add it tonight. Amen. So the first one is unfaithfulness or adultery. Amen. Okay, we can be unfaithful in a relationship. Or we can be unfaithful to God. Amen. Okay? So let's not let's, let's not get to a place where we try to just tie everything over to the spiritual side and then not think about the natural side. Amen. Amen. Because when you hear unfaithfulness or adultery, we always think of adultery just a married somebody married going out and sleeping around on their partner or their wife Amen. or their husband. Amen. Okay? But adultery here, it can there's a such thing as spiritual adultery. And spiritual unfaithfulness. Amen? Okay? And the, and, the, and the scriptures here is Ezekiel 16, 15, uh, uh, in verse 28. Proverbs 5, and verses 1 through 14. Galatians chapter 5, and verse 19. The next fruit is spirit, soul, or body prostitution. Okay? We can use our body for things that are unpleasing to God. Amen? Amen? Okay, uh, and if that, I'm, I won't say Ezekiel again. I won't say Proverbs again. Deuteronomy 23, 17 and 18. And I want you to take time out. You know, even you in in social media out there, take time out to look some of these scriptures up. Not just look them up, but but study them and understand. You know what these scriptures are saying to us. The next one is chronic dissatisfaction. Chronic. Okay, Ezekiel 16:28. Uh, love the love of money Chasing money Okay When the scripture says uh, In 1 Timothy 6 17-14 Let me begin to talk about You know that, that, that um, 
You know, many have been pierced with many sorrows because of the love of money. Uh, the love of money is the root of all evil, according to the scriptures. And, um, the, you know, one interpretation of it could be that you will do anything when you love money to get it. Amen. Don't make no difference. You know, you know, just taking from people, uh, doing corrupt business deals and that's and that sort of thing. You can be a leader or you can be a preacher that's doing a, a service. And you start to fleece the flock of God. Amen. Because you love money. You'll start, you know, trying to uh, do gimmicks and tricks to, okay, that's, uh, I, I, the Lord just spoke to me and said, I need uh, 10 people with $100. Amen. Okay. You know, that's one of the gimmicks that a lot of people are using. And then, and then you shouldn't, you shouldn't make nobody force you to, to get up and get in that line or, or never let nobody force you to give a seed. If it's not in your heart. Amen. Everybody gets something in their hand. Air. <laughs> I'm just talking about it. You know, I mean, come on. And, it's, and then sometimes, you know, when that when that speaker may get up and say, you know, God have, 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 have told me to ask you to sow a seed. You know, and if you feel it, do it. And if somebody else, and if somebody else don't do it, then don't worry about it. Amen. Amen. But we got, we got so much of this stuff going on. In the, a good thing can be corrupted. Amen. Okay, a good thing can't be corrupted. Anytime you have true, you always have false. Always remember that. Anytime you have good, you'll always have evil. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, one, one thing I, one, I'm, I'm gonna give you these fruit, and then I'm gonna need to read my scriptures out of my book too. Okay. Okay. So the next one is, uh, and I, I, I meant to give you Proverbs. We already gave you Proverbs 15. We did. No, we didn't. Proverbs 15, 27, and then First Timothy 6, 7 to 14. Okay. Fornication. What is fornication? Sleeping around. sleeping around by unmarried people. Okay? Sleeping around. Okay? Uh, idolatry. That's making our idols out of things. Idol worship. Amen. Right? Excessive appetite, overeating, gluttony. Uh, uh, Hosea, I'm sorry, fornication, the scripture was Hosea 4, 13 through 19. Our, our idolatry was Judges 2, verse 17. Uh, Ezekiel, the whole chapter of 16. Leviticus 17 and 7. Excessive appetite, overeating. It's a lot of us that's guilty of that. Amen. We're, we're guilty. Come on, y'all. Just don't look around. Just look look in the mirror. First Corinthians chapter 6, 13 through 16, and Philippians 3, 19. Uh, worldliness. Worldliness. Yeah, worldliness. What is worldliness? You 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 may, you may have a love of the things of the world. Okay, in that scripture, James four and four, if you get to talk about how, if you get to talk about, uh, say that you love the things of the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Okay, and then and and, and, and over in I think it's First John somewhere it says all that's in the world is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And to simply describe what they are talking about is under each one of those three topics: lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. Falls all of the sins. In the world of all desires of the flesh. Because the enemy, he always feeds us stuff that we like, Amen. that the flesh desires. Amen. 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 Our flesh is our appetite. Never forget that. In my appetite dwells nothing good. In my flesh dwells nothing good. Okay? That's what my flesh is. I got a strong desire for something. My flesh could lust stuff. The word lust means what? Strong desire. strong desire or a strong craving for something. So, you know, so, so when you tell somebody, I see the lust, I see the spirit of lust. It don't mean always sexual. Amen. That's the first thing we go to. You got a spirit of lust. <laughs> Amen. I've heard people ask me, hey, do I have a spirit of lust? I said, I, I, I like some things. <laughs> Hello, but it's not the spirit of lust. What well, the question's on the floor then? Can our love for our, for our spouse slip over to the rim of lust? Have you ever thought about it? Have our love for our spouse ever slipped over to the rim of uh, 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 obsession? Can okay, I smile? Boy, look at that Kool Aid smile there. Oh, oh, oh no, something. <laughs> Have you, have you ever thought about it? You can overlove somebody. 
Because people, I, I think some people think you, you can't love somebody, people, but for so much. But I think um, fatal attraction. Amen. Over love. You're obsessed now. It's, it's a lot of stuff that's mixed. Amen. You know, you'll do anything. You'll kill somebody for this person. Amen. You know, God ain't nowhere in that. Okay? Amen. We shouldn't be Christians, but I killed somebody with my wife. Quiet now. Okay. So, 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 in, in, in that worldliness is James 4 and 4. And I think we're going to read that because I, I did run across it in the, in the text. Or not the text. I mean, in the, in, read through the chapter. And the spirit I want to add is the spirit of Jezebel. I want to add the spirit of Jezebel because uh, I've been on the quest for this. I've been chasing this spirit a long time. And what I mean is I've been on a quest to study this, this demon. This demon is a, a it's a combination of spirits. Yeah. It's a combination of spirits. Yeah, and, 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 and uh, I, I've been trying to wonder what strong man is this? Uh, it's seduction. You know, it's control. It's manipulation. It's just so much in there. Because if you look at the natural Jezebel, she's in the book of Kings. Then when you come over to the New Testament, she's in the book of Revelations in the end. But then in the book of Revelation, well, both of them are spirits, but it's more so a, a, a woman that call herself a prophetess. So you, you say, uh, 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 Jesus in Revelation says, but you know, I got one thing against you. You allow this woman to teach. Yeah, you allow this, you, you allow this spirit to seduce my people. Amen. So the spirit of Jezebel can be either male or female. But now let's make it plain that this spirit on a woman is a witch. And on a man it's a warlock. Let's make that plain now. So either or. Okay? Amen. Alright. It, it'll suck you in and you don't even know it. It's not always sexual. It just loves power. That spirit loves power. It loves to be in charge. This spirit, when you see it at work in a ministry, is always close to leadership. Amen. It's always close to leadership. It'll make leadership think that it's on this side, and I'm praying for this, and I'm interceding for you and all this, but all the while, it's trying to take over. You got to know this. I studied that thing all the way out, man. The, Je the, the, the Jezebel spirit, it, 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 it has a, 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 um, um, a group of people that, that surrounds it. Because it's a spirit. And this spirit operating in, it always has people around it, but it gives out assignments to these people. And it watch them, it'll give instructions, but it never does it itself, but it, it instructs people, and the people are so controlled that they, they work in Jezebel, don't even realize it. And you got people in ministries that they're just puppets and pawns. And they're pastors of the Jezebel spirit working in them. Amen. Now watch this. I, I, I see you. But, but the thing about it, but everything that they do for Jezebel, Jezebel spirit gets the credit. Come on. Being called to leadership. Being called to leadership. Okay. If you're, you're spending time with God, you're doing what you're supposed to do. Okay. How, how does a spirit like that come in and you not realize it? I think it's, first of all, Let's look at some of the attributes of Satan. Okay. In, from the beginning, in the garden, the Bible says that the serpent was more crafty than all of the other beasts or stuff or, or rip, all the other creatures that were in the garden. Okay. So now the enemy already knows what type of power. Some leaders, they, they, they start getting a uh, 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 power struggling, power struggle. Okay, power struggle. It starts small. Everything starts as a seed. Understand, no, there, there ain't no real big seeds out there. All seeds are, are, are small. They got to grow because what's in the seed is on the inside. And so, uh, a leader that finds themselves walking in this Jezebel spirit is what you talking about? Okay. What if you're being manipulative, but you don't, you don't know, you don't realize? Holy Spirit is going to share something with you. Yeah, Holy Spirit is going to share something. Somebody is going to see something. You understand what I'm saying? But the thing about it, uh, now when somebody comes to us, we got to make sure that 
that that that we don't oh, oh, oh now man, touch not God's anointing all this food in it. All these scriptures we use. Okay? You know, I've, I've heard people even teach that only God can correct pastors. You know, we all can be rebuked. We all can be corrected. Amen. 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 And so, I just believe that it starts small. You know, um, let's say, for instance, I'll just use myself in, as an example. So, so, so what if um, I'm a great teacher? Okay? Um, God, you start to drop revelation in me, and I start to share it. And the accolades of men, you know, start to feed me. Oh, you understand what I'm saying? You know, uh, Facebook start blowing up. You're, you know, you start checking Facebook, and last week you had 100 viewers. This week you got 300. So you start feeding off that. Yeah, yeah, you start, because it's, 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 it's starting small. Okay, so so then now you think you're doing something. So so instead of Holy Spirit that was doing it because the revelation came from Holy Spirit, then we'll start thinking it's us. Amen. We'll start thinking it's us. It, it don't it don't take. A, okay, let, let's go back to Satan because it it all goes back from the beginning. Okay, God created him the way that He wanted him created. He was a leader. He messed around. And found out too much. Now the Bible said he was good until something was found in him. Something was found in him. It was a spirit. So 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 God so so God gonna warn me somewhere before I get myself in trouble. They warned off. The Bible said uh, pride come before destruction, a haughty spirit before fall. So warning gonna come somewhere. Either God gonna warn me some kind of way. It might be a dream. Somebody might, you know, you know, send me a text message. Because, you know, sometimes you can't talk to people. Sometimes you might have to send them a text message or something. Because you already know that they'll read a text message. They got to read it because they're going to know what they want to do. They're going to want to know what it says. <laughs> so it ain't going to really hit them after they finish reading it. But at least you got it to them. Because some people you can't approach. It's just that confrontational. Prideful people, they ain't going to hear nobody. They think it's everybody else is wrong and they're right. So I just believe that it starts small. You know, it may start, like I said, it may start, man, you preach this morning. Okay, can I say something? Yeah, you can say something. Okay. When I show Jerry today, I hear you preach. It's good. Okay. And I always make some type of comment or something on Facebook. Is that a problem? No, it's not a problem. Okay. No, because I, I, I see a lot of your posts a lot of times. You, 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 know, you always make sure you, you give in the glory to God. You understand? I always, we, we always want to give. We don't want to take what belongs to Him. The credit should go to Him. You know, when you say something, I say, "Amen." To God be the glory. You understand what I'm saying? Because I, I know it won't me. You know, if you go home with me, you'll say, "No, nah, it couldn't have been Him." <laughs> I made mean, that bad, but I'm just saying. <laughs> See, I, I think I think the safe ground is to make sure you talk about yourself. Amen. Amen. <laughs> if you want to know the real truth. <laughs> you know they always say you, you know let somebody undo you that, that really know the person and want to stay with you okay so so Jezebel so I just believe that that Jezebel spirit because just that, that Jezebel spirit I'm sorry you got a question come on talk loud we got to hear you okay They say, well, we can't, we can't, I, can't, I can't hear you. It's weird. Now, I can hear you now. To say what? I think he's talking about if somebody like gives you real credit for a dump or something. Yeah, naturally, yeah, I, I, and then he's like, to I'm glad you said that because something just popped up in my head. Watch this. You finish? Okay. In the Senate. Okay, I got you. But, 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 but here, here's something that came to me, and I forgot to say it a couple of weeks ago. There's there's more than one type of pride. You know, you can be proud about something that you've done and not be prideful. You know, it's like, say, for instance, maybe you're a brick mason and you just built a mailbox, brick mailbox, and you stand back and you look at it. 
you just taking pride in your work. Because you, you want to make sure. But this is this your signature. Every time you ride by, is that joker leaning or whatever? You're going to see it every time you ride by. So you're taking pride. That's a different type of pride of having the pride is, yeah, can't nobody do it like me. You you can't call nobody about me because I'm going to look and do it now. <laughs> you feel me? I, look, I, I, I remember inviting when we first got started with the ministry. And I remember asking this guy, I said, look, man, we're getting ready to start. And, and I want you to come and preach. Oh, oh, I, I said, now, 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 I said, now seek the Lord, you know, because we want to work. Oh, I got a word from the Lord. I already got a word. So I automatically in my spirit, you know, I don't need you. I don't need you to come and preach. You're, you're too cocky. Too cocky. Anytime we stand up, but you can have a word. I'm not saying, but, 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 but I heard one, and then one guy told me, said, man, man, you ain't never heard me preach. I said, no. Oh, man, I, man, I, oh, I can go. <laughs> And a few years ago, I seen this guy sitting on the side of the road. And I got out and had a talk with him. And he was ready to give up. But you can preach. So that's why I'm trying to tell you, good preaching don't keep, don't, don't keep you. We ain't no better than our last sermon. Yeah, you, you ain't no better than your last dunk. Because if the next dunk you miss, that's what they're going to remember. The last thing you've done, the last thing they remember. Are you understand what I'm saying? So I hope I answered your question. Yeah, it's okay to, you know, to to take a, you know, to to take to be proud of what you've done, but don't let it go to your head. You ain't got to say to God, "Be the glory," but you know it was Him. You be like, I, I remember seeing Michael Jordan. Jordan, he shot the shot, and I don't think he think the shot was gonna go in. It went in, and I seen him run down the court. They were like, "Wow!" He was like, "Like I don't even know." Okay, okay. So anyway, there's some people that. God just gifted them to do certain things in. They can do it. It's just natural to them. Okay? You got some people that they can just preach. They can just teach. It's natural. You, you, you can get up and teach a lesson because you, got a, you, because you got a lesson outline. And you don't have to be anointed to do it. But the anointing makes the difference. It makes the difference. Okay? Alright, so hoardings. Let me give you a definition of this. In scripture, the word the definition is idolatry. It's the desertion of the worship of the true God for the worship of idols. So whoredom, the spirit of whoredoms in the scriptures mean that you've deserted the true God and you start worshiping idols. Okay, you, you made an exchange. You start chasing something besides the true God. Amen. Now watch now. So the, and, the, and then I got another definition for you. This right here is the McNeil version. <laughs> to love something more than we love God. That's something. To love something more than you, we love God. That's my that's mine. Lusting for something more than God. Because then when you start finding yourself lusting for something more than you love God, uh your, the word lusting means I start chasing something. I'm craving something more than I'm craving God. Then I find myself under the spirit of the strong man of the whole spirit of whoredoms. Now, 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 let, let me, let, let me, I, got, I got to read my other scriptures. I, I forgot. Second Corinthians. Uh, can you read me Second Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3? Uh, let me see. Let's get to Second Corinthians chapter 10. Verse 3 through 5. For thou we walk, for though we walk, for though we walk mm -hmm. in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Uh huh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Uh huh. Read five. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that is also itself against the knowledge of God, mm -hmm. and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Okay, come over. To, come over to chapter six of Ephesians for me, and read verses ten through thirteen. Ephesians chapter six, verses ten through thirteen. Uh, 
Finally, my brethren, mm -hmm. be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers and against rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wicked, wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole arm of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Thank you. So th those are open scriptures. Okay, those are the open scriptures that we use every week. We try to use them every week. I think I missed one week, and um, but we all right. Amen. Amen. And so we're going to get into this script. We're going to get into this spirit now, and let's kind of rip it open so we can kind of see really what some of the stuff that we deal with. Amen. Amen. I'm reading out of the book. This strong man's name seems to imply that only people who frequent prostitutes are influenced by the spirit of whoredoms. So you know when you start hearing the word whoredoms, you know a whore. Just look at bring, bring it up a whore. You think about prostitute, okay? But it goes deeper than that. And see, for the most part, that's all the enemy wants us to see. Yeah. He don't want us to. He don't want us to go behind the veil and see what's really, you know, and, and see what he really trying to overtake us with. He don't want us to see that. Amen. Yeah, because you know he, he understands that if not, let's open my eyes, I can defeat him. Amen. Amen. The Bible says in Hosea four six, we are destroyed. For the lack of knowledge. Now it is not the. I, I went through and read Hosea, so most of Hosea, even in chapter four. It's not the people's fault that they lack knowledge. It was the priest's fault because the priest did not teach them. And if you keep reading out in there, the Bible said he told him he said, "Now you priest, because you didn't teach my people, now I'm going to hold you accountable." Say yes, sir. They're going to be judged more strictly because they taught the word and didn't live it. Okay, so watch it. So, so, so don't, 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 let, don't let that you know, make you fearful and not want to teach the word. Because <laughs> yeah, you love God, you're going, to keep, you're going to keep his commandments. And, and the Bible said his, his commandments are not grievous. Yeah, they're not grievous. Yeah. And so, so um, it says, but, this, but there is more to it than that. This particular condition can be a can be a spiritual as well as a physical bondage. And see that, like I said, not knowing something can hurt us. I found out, man. We the only thing we like to hear is a lot of cliches. Knowledge is power. What about what you don't know? What is that? It destroys us. You understand what I'm saying? It destroys us. And see, the thing about it is, we don't have enough leaders. That will take time to study. Amen. They don't take time to study. Amen. The only thing they want to do is brush across stuff and give us the bare the bare minimum. Amen. A little dab can't a little dab won't do us. Amen. Man, we're fighting too much stuff. Man, the warfare is thick and the enemy is playing for souls. Amen. So just tell me the truth, whether I want it or not. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? I mean, man, we <laughs> we deserve more than what people are giving us, man. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, don't come giving me a little appetizer. Give me the full meal. Amen. Yeah. Let me tell you, uh, let me tell you this here. I hope this don't offend nobody when I say this. But preachers get off my nerve when they say, I got to finish this. If you got to leave, go ahead and leave. Just go ahead and finish. Yeah. You may hear me say, can I finish this place? Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it, may, it might be the, the, the part that I don't finish is the part that you need. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, so many times, look, how, how many shows do you get in the middle of and then cut the TV off? <laughs> Not in it. Not in it. So you want to know what the end is going to be, am I right? So, so sometimes we come, we come to the house of God, let's just get the, let's get the whole scroll, whether we eat it or not. Amen, Amen somebody. Amen. Let's just get all of it. Amen. 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 And so, 
um, 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 the book of Hosea points points us just points up just such a case. He said, "My people ask their counsel at their stocks, and their staff declared unto them witchcraft for the spirit of whoredoms have caused them to err, and they have gone a whoring from under their God." So because people don't want to give me the truth of God's word, they want to see, see half truth is a whole lie. Yeah. Exaggeration is a lie. Hello. And sometimes we and sometimes we stand up and exaggerate the scriptures. Amen. Let's, let's, let's do ourselves a favor and stop exaggerating and pumping the scriptures up. If they don't say something. Don't tell the people that they said something that God ain't said in the word. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? We do a lot of stuff to try to keep people around, man. Amen. No, just tell them the whole truth and nothing but the truth. You know, that's amazing to me how they'll get you to stand up in a courtroom and put your hand on the Bible and say, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God. God ain't going to help you. It's going to be up to you. And you put your hand, people put their hands on Bibles every day and tell lies. Some people don't have to put it, but they don't have to put their hand on the Bible. They still tell a lie. So, 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 so God is really dealing with the priest here. Now, okay, let's, let's look at uh, Exodus four and five. This is the one that talking about the spirit of whoredom. They will not frame their doings to turn unto their God, for the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them, and they do not have, and they have not known the Lord. So the thing about it is. Uh, we got to watch what we're around. Let's watch what we're around. Let's watch the places we're going, the people we're hanging out with. Because if people can't help you, why would you be with them? If some of these, look, I think it's, it's over in the book of Kings, maybe. It talks about the, the one, the, the, the lepers that were starving. It's going to give you a good revelation. I think it's in 2 Kings 4, maybe. I'm not, I'm not certain. Find, find about the two lepers that were, that was, that was, um, that were starving. And they went into the city to see if they could get something to eat. Okay, is this second, second King 7? In other words, listen to me now. Um, they were getting ready to starve. Now, I, I want, I'm not going to read it, but I want you to I want you to to note it so that you can read it when you get home. You probably won't, but Okay, you see right there, uh, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. And there were four lepers men at the end, entered, entered into the gate. And they said one to another, why sit, why, why sit we here until we die? If we say, if we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. Now therefore came, now therefore came, and let us fall into the host of Syrians. If they shall save us alive, we shall live. If they kill us, but but shall but we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight or early in the morning to go to the camp in the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there. So so in other words, they were going to die anyway. Break some more here. So they said, look, we're going to die anyway. Why sit here? Why can't we go to the city? We might stand a chance to live. We're going to die anyway. So let's take a chance. Why do people sit in dead churches and you're going to die anyway? Why don't you come over to the city over here and eat and live? When they got to the city, to the camp of the Syrians, there was nobody there. And they ate until they were full. People are dying because they don't want to get up and move. Jesus. Mm. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. You've been there 20 years and ain't nothing changed in your spirit yet. And you're going to see, you, you ain't going to sit there and die. You already dead. Well, I don't want to leave my family. Really? I don't care about no family church. I don't care if your grandmammy did snap at the church. Amen. 
Amen. We got to get stuck. Got to get off this stuck on stupid stuff. Amen. We got to seek the Lord and see where you need to be at. Amen. 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 You know, if there's a tough call on your life, you're going to need a tough ministry to develop it. Amen. People around here feeding you cake for breakfast. No, you need the meat of the word. Amen. You need somebody to tell you to sit down and shut your mouth. Amen. 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 Yeah, I mean, you need somebody to tell you to stop going and hanging out with them people and stop going everywhere. Amen. Amen. You need to tell you need people to tell you you can't go to the nightclub on Saturday night and then come into church on Sunday morning and still preach. Amen. Still teach, still sing in the choir. Amen. 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 You're making God sick because you're lukewarm. Amen. Somebody need to tell us. Amen. Come on. You're going to die anyway. Come over here and die in the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, let's get out there right before we make somebody mad. I'm, I'm surprised they got the emoji with the middle finger. Y'all seen it? I ain't, but somebody might. It, it, it. Somebody must have a perverted phone. Okay. They'll, put, they, they, they'll, they, they'll shoot that in the church too. They don't care. So let's keep moving now because it's very interesting to me. Uh, it says Hosea's marriage to a harlot illustrated to the nation what they were doing when they forsook God to embrace the idols and false gods of their neighboring nations. You need to do yourself a favor and read the whole book of Hosea. In the first chapter, you'll see where the prophet Hosea was married to a woman named Gomer. And you'll see where a lot of the kids of his, them, them kids she had, won't his. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. She was a prostitute. She was a whore. She was a picture of the church. So she went prostituting out the other men. Amen. Amen. Gomer, uh, Gomer represented the church. Hosea represented God. This is a type and shadow. God wanted to show Israel, I mean Hosea, a picture of how he felt. They sold Gomer and Hosea went and bought her back. That's how much God loves his people. He bought us back. And he hung on Calvary. He redeemed us back. We're redeemed by his blood. Amen. Precious blood. Uncontaminated. Pure and holy. He knew it was the only blood, blood that, that would redeem. If there had been no remission of sins. I mean no, no shedding of blood. There could be no forgiveness or remission of sins. Amen. The blood of bulls and uh, goats, goats, bulls and, and, and bullocks, they only atoned. They only covered it for a year. Amen. And the days then, 1365, they were shorter, according to the Jewish calendar. We won't go there tonight. Uh, yeah, we got too much already. Don't, please don't go there. <laughs> Amen. Okay, let's move. Can we move? So do yourself a favor. Read the book of Hosea. That book of Hosea, man, it, and, and, and get a spiritual mind. Take your time and read it and see us and see God in there. Amen. We God, we always give God the short end of the stick. Spirit of whoredom. It's, it's bad in the church. We've been holding out the other gods since we came to Christ. Okay, we'll see in a minute. You, 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 we, we're going to ask you what day you got saved. We're going to ask you what's your other God. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. So, Hosea, so according to Hosea, uh, accordingly, Hosea felt the same pain and agony on a physical level with his haunted wife that God experiences when his people are unfaithful to him and in their pursuit of other gods. It hurts the heart of God when God sees us going the other way. It hurts the heart of God when God sees us going to other avenues to get what we need and we won't trust him. Yeah. It does. Would it hurt your heart if you had a wife or a husband and they went to other places to get love and didn't get it from you? Yeah. Would it hurt your heart? Yeah. Can, 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 we try to, can we try to imagine how the heart of God feels with all the children that he got and all of the walking away that we do on him? Yeah. Look, just kind of halfway imagine. You're thinking about your little situation and your little spouse. And God loves the whole world as a whole. And he hates him to see him just lose one. 
We're around here teaching about money. Man, let me tell you something. If you get God and the faith of God on your life, money wouldn't even matter to you. Right. You know what I'm saying? God, God knows you got bills. Come on, man. You know, he'll make sure you got income to pay your bills so you can right. stay focused. Amen. And then we're around here. Then when we get the money, we start spending the money on the wrong thing. And the wrong thing, we begin to become our God in the place of God. Amen. Right. Amen. Because this flesh is dangerous. Right. Yeah, it's and everything it won't, it only like it for a couple days. Then the next week, it's after something else. <laughs> Don't tell on yourself. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? I've always said since I've been standing up and teaching and preaching, you will never satisfy this flesh. You buy a new suit this week, amen. The next, the, the next week, it wants something else. That suit won't, it, it, it won't new enough. <laughs> Just remember the house that you that you that you're building today. Somebody is gonna be building one bigger than yours next week. Amen. Then you're gonna get mad. <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 so watch this now. Give me give me Matthew chapter twelve and verse twenty. Let me let me get over here with you. Verse twenty. This is good stuff tonight, y'all. Amen. Let's look at let's look, let's look at Matthew twelve. And let's look at verse, uh, let me see what I want first. What are we at here? 12. Let's, yeah, let's, 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 let me see. I might have wrote this wrong. Okay, yeah. G give me verse 22. Then was brought unto him one possessed with the devil, mm -hmm. blind and dumb. And he healed him, in so much that the blind and dumb both spake and saw. Okay. And all the people were amazed and said, "Is not this the son of David?" Keep reading. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, "This fellow doth not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils." Mm -hmm. Keep reading. And Jesus knew their thoughts. Wow! You mean tell me Jesus can know my thoughts? Amen. You mean you mean He can know my thoughts when I'm just sitting there and somebody I'm saying, "Yes, Lord, I'll follow you, Lord." And He's saying, "No, you won't, Lord." <laughs> Go ahead and keep reading. Jesus knew their thoughts and said unto them, "Uh huh." Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. Mm -hmm. Every city or house divided against itself shall not stand. Hold it right there. That's what I want to tell Every house divided against itself will not stand. Amen. The church was going one way, Gomer. And the prophet was going another way. So when one in the house is trying to serve God and the other ain't, it divides the house. Y'all ever see y'all ever seen the, the, the license plates they're making now? NC State, UNC. Yeah. They got down in the middle, house divided. I would never put that junk on my car. Amen. Okay, and, 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 and uh, I mean, I'm not saying about the team, but we got to be careful what we're brought, what, what, what we're advertising for, for the for the enemy. Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with sports, but sports can, can become a god. Yeah. The 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 the, uh, the Duke Blue Devils. I didn't want I didn't even want a red devil vacuum cleaning the house. Yeah. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, oh, you religious? No, I just I just didn't want that word in there. Well, it's in the Bible, but see. I didn't put it there though. Amen. Okay. Two inches on the wheel. So a house divided. That's, that's why I wanted to go. A house divided. Everything was shaking their head. It's okay. If you want to call the red devils? You like, okay. <laughs> Blue devils, black devils, red. I'm not talking. I'm not. Look, I'm not. I was, I was talking about something years ago. Oh, you okay? I got you. Now thank you. Okay, so house divided. Now watch this. Although we may not actually offer sacrifices to a physical idol. Okay, whatever comes between us and our relationship to God is still an idol and thus a form of spiritual adultery. Watch this. Although sex may not be, although sex may not be involved. Amen. Give me Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3. Exodus 20. I'm going over there too. We all going together. Hold on a minute. Are you there? Wait a minute. 
What did I take Exodus? 20 and verse 3. Okay. All right, read the Bible. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Wait a minute. You read that right? Thou shalt. Okay. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Okay. Give me Exodus 34. God don't want nothing in front of him now. We talked about uh, 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 you know, putting stuff in front of him. Exodus 34. Verse 12. Take heed to thyself, mm -hmm. lest thou make a covenant with the inhab inhabitants of the land whither thou goest, okay. lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee. Keep reading. But ye shall destroy their altar, but, but ye shall destroy their altars, uh -huh. break their images, and cut down their groves. Keep reading. For thou shalt worship no other God, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, Ooh. is a jealous God. Read. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a whoring, whoring after their gods, mm -hmm. and do sacrifice unto their gods. And one called thee, and thou eat of his sacrifice. One more. And thou take their, of their daughters. And unto thy sons and their daughters go a whoring after their gods, and make thy sons go whoring after their gods. So God already tell us from the beginning what not to do. Amen. And we will find ourselves because curiosity kills our little cat. Amen. We'll find ourselves God don't know what he's talking about. Wow. Solomon, the Lord told Solomon. Leave those pagan women alone. And here's the richest king to ever live. And in the end, his heart was turned from God. If a woman don't turn your heart, it can't be turned. I told, I, I told one guy, if God made anything better than a woman, he kept it to himself. <laughs> Amen. I mean, a woman need a man, and a man need a woman. Amen. God made it that way. That's why, that's why I can't say I two, two big grown men up, up, up there hugging, they're rubbing, and, and, and dirt falling off of them. Big legs rubbing together and hair falling on the floor. The girls, they like, like rubbing two pieces of wood together. So he, so he, tell them, he, told, he told them here in this passage... I am jealous. It's not a spirit. In other words, I want you to myself. That's what I want. That's what God wanted. He said, when you go into the land, I'm already telling you, do not mess with them people. Drive them out. Drive them out. And the various thing God tells us to do, we don't do it. Like God don't know what he's talking about. Does he know everything? Yes. Has he got more sense than the whole world put together? Yes. Well, we won't just follow, follow his instruction. He said, he said these people, they, they, they women, they, they, they worship in idols. He said if you mess around with them, you're going to be worshiping idols too. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Don't look. God done told some of us, leave them old unsaved girls alone, and we still messing with them. Oh, I'm going to draw to Christ. You're going to draw something out right. You're going to pick up something that Clorox won't get off of it. It's called sin. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm just saying. Amen. Got to have them. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get them. Amen. Start scheming. Jesus. That's when the devil start using it. <laughs> Amen. Because anytime, anytime you're doing anything to get a woman or a man, God, he, God has left the picture. Okay. All right. Let, let, let's move on for, for somebody to, to put that finger on the tip out. <laughs> so whatever rules us is our God. I got to read that again. Whatever rules us is our God. Be it food. Some people love food. Sex. Some people got to have it. 
<laughs> Somebody said, Jesus. What's that next word? Diversion. Something that something that diverts me or amuses me. Something that draws me. Something that entertains me. I got to have it. Some of these shows the have and the have nots. Some of these demonic shows like uh, uh, hip hop basketball wives and stuff like that. Range Rover. Yeah, Green Tree. Show, we're watching shows on TV but the enemy is beating the church down and we are watching it and eating it up. I want to watch next week to see if they catch the bishop in the bed with them. And the one that, 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 that produced Green Tree is not even a Christian. She's a part of the New Age movement. Her name is Oprah Winfrey. And, 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 and they're, making, they're making a God out of her. Making a God out of her. She, they, they made it a big deal because she endorsed Barack Obama. Okay, she, she divorced a, a demon. Yeah, I call him a demon. Anytime somebody assigned divorce, I mean, uh, uh, abortion into law is a demon. Amen. Amen. And then signed the, 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 the same sex marriage into a law. I don't hate him. I hate that spirit that used it. Amen. Okay, I don't hate nobody. Sports. Because sports, you know, sports is a, is a big. You got a question? What stuff be fair? No, that, no, that that show that that show that Green Leaf that show comes from the life of a preacher in the Church of God in Christ. This was a true event, and she is beating the church down, and the church is loving it. What you talking about? I'm, I, I ain't talking about no reality TV. I don't even watch that joke. That joke. No, I ain't talking about that. This ain't reality. This right here. This right here is something that she's just bringing out that's been hidden. Now she want to expose it because she she mad because something happened to her. That's really what it's about. Revenge. And we sit up watching my oh man, I can't hear you. You still won't turn. No, no, no. What you need to do is you need to turn that junk off. We wonder why we can't quote no scriptures on Sunday morning. <laughs> Jump up in the middle of scripture and cuss. Then, then you wonder why. That's what's in you. Amen. Amen. David said, David didn't say, green tree have I hid in my heart. <laughs> Did he say that? Did he say the have and the have not? Have I hid my heart that I, in my heart that I might not sin against him? The word of God have I hid in my heart. We don't open, we don't know. You ain't got to open the Bible to get the word in you. Amen. We man, I'm telling you, man, you got a whole week to learn one scripture. Just one scripture. I don't get it. We learn how we, we remember names, we remember addresses, phone numbers. And that's getting a little hard now because we put a lot of names in the phone. And the, and, the, and the number don't really pop up. If it do, it pop up real small. But you don't. Even, oh, I ain't worried. I, I see who it is. All you gotta do is just see his name. You go to grinning. Come grab. I call you back later. <laughs> yeah. You, and then you you talk to him the rest of the night, and you ain't thinking about God. You know, cause you know, you know, a relationship can be. I think it's in there. Okay. Oh, uh, so let's talk about sports. Sports have became a big money making operation. Bunch of gambling. It has became a God. Amen. Let's look at, look at money. Power. The pursuit of a career. People put all this stuff before God and it becomes a God. Amen. Video games. People sit in front of it. Grown men. With families. You sit in GameStop and places like that buying video games. Ain't buying them for their sons. Television. A possession. Whether it be car, house, clothes, whatever. Uh, uh, your shoe collection. Some women love shoes. Some women just love shopping. I love shopping. Amen. Amen. 
uh, our children. Don't you know that it's demonic if you don't cut the soul time with you and your children when they're about 14 years old? And when they get grown and you're still in their life and they married or even have left your house and they still calling you talking about what should I do? And they married now. They come to your house every time her, her and the, maybe her or him and the, the spouse have an argument. They come flying to you. Well, you know what you have to tell them? Go right on back to the house over there. You, you married them, y'all work it out. Keep me out of it. Because the moment they break up, then you got, you got to come back and you got more baggage. You got to take care of Somebody know what them team are. Somebody know what them team are. Okay, yeah, and, 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 and the thing about it, they can become a stronghold in your life. Now you can't, you want to get rid of them and you can't. Amen. 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 And the Bible said, well, the mother leave her suckling. But the thing about it is, no, you shouldn't leave your suckling or your children. The word suckling means children. What you should do is make sure you sever the cord at the right time. Cut them loose so when they get grown, you won't, they won't break your heart. When they, they, they always tell me, when they're young, they get under your feet. They get in your way. But when they're old, they get in your heart. Amen. Well, just train them up the right way. Yeah, train them up the right way. Okay? So then when, so then when time comes, you can watch what you what you develop in them and then let them grow up and you, see, you, know, you can be a proud parent. You know, in the Bible, it always talks about the son. In the book, in, in the book of Proverbs, it talks about the son being a disgrace to the mother and, and the son. No, it talks about the daughter, because the, the, the son should have been the one that was empowered. If a woman didn't have a son back in the Bible days, she was considered a dog for whatever reason. I said a woman back then, they, they, they most sons were the ones that 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 were the heirs. Okay, if a woman didn't have a son, then she was nothing. She she wouldn't even be, to be looked upon. Amen. Okay. And, 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 and things that, that was their custom over there now. Some of that stuff we can use as we're going down through this Christian journey, but a lot of it we can. Amen. Because of the customs. Amen. Okay. All right. Uh, or, 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 or a religion or a cause. Jesus. I'm going to stop right there. Let, let, let me hit that right there. A religion. What you can, what you believe can become a god. You can get stuck on something and it be wrong. You think you're right, and everybody else is wrong. What does it mean when it says or oh, cause? And events, events, marches. You know, you you can allow something in your life to occupy more of your time than you spend with God. And it can become our God because we exert so much energy toward it because we want it to work. What, what if God really ain't, ain't giving you the energy to do it, but you're still trying to force it? Amen. You don't know talk about it. Huh? And we walk around so tired now because the thing we're doing is good, but God ain't in it. Amen. So God is not, God, is, God don't have to, to facilitate a thing if he didn't tell us to do it. It's just like the anointing on something. God doesn't anoint nothing that he ain't called me to. And I can't get mad with nobody but me. Amen. Amen. Get up and sing a song and God didn't tell you to sing it. You, you screaming like a rooster. Wonder why you do the, 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 the notes ain't coming out right. And some people can sing naturally. But if you but if you want somebody to get a breakthrough off your singing, let the anointing be involved. Get, get, get God involved. And whatever we're doing in our life. If we, we make sure God is involved in it, it comes out so much better. Amen. You know what I'm saying? And then people don't start patting us across our back. I don't like people to pat me up. Because what happens is, they get ready to start something in me. Amen. You know, people can plant a seed in you and start a demon growing in you and you don't even realize until it's grown. That's a good teaching right there all by itself. Amen? Amen. The spirit of order, we got to stop it, buddy. We, a little over. We got to stop it. Like, come on, clap them feet. 